On today's episode of Locked On Angels, Otani holds a press conference, and we're going to share our responses to what he said. We're recapping Reed Detmer's strong start last night against the Dodgers, and we're giving you three prospects to watch this season. It's time to get Locked On with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On Everydayer. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. And today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use our promo code all overcase locked on MLB for a first deposit match of up to $100. Thank you for being here for this episode of Locked On Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, aka the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Hey, we're gearing up for season three of the Super Halo Bros here on Locked On Angels, and it's the 2024 season. Starts on Thursday. We'll do a full recap of the game on Friday. We can't wait for that. Our third season here at Locked On Angels, talking Angels baseball Monday through Friday, every single weekday. On today's show, Mike, we're recapping that game against the Dodgers and uh, Nolan Shonowell. I think we need to have a conversation about him yep. and where he was in that lineup. We're giving you three prospects to watch this season according to MLB.com. But first up and foremost, people have been asking, what's your opinion on this whole Otani thing, Ipe thing? And this gambling scandal that's gone on, so we thought we'd take some time to address that right off the bat. Let's do, let's do it. Yeah, we haven't talked about it because we are obviously locked on angels, and so we're going to prioritize angel players and angel news. And we know our everydayers are angel fans. And Otani isn't an angel, but obviously he's important to the angel community. He's obviously somebody that we admire and admired when he was with us, and so we thought it would be important for us to address it and talk about what he talked about yesterday. So Tani did make a statement. He did read a statement and then his interpreter would read it in English. John, I already noticed right off the bat and a lot of our uh, Japanese listeners, they said that this interpreter did a much better job of communicating. And I know he was reading, but in other, in, in other aspects, they said he did a much better job of communicating than Ipe did. They said sometimes Ipe would kind of summarize it in a way that wasn't the full extent of what of what Shohei said. Now, I know <laughs> with all of the circumstances, that sounds a bit fishy and a bit weird, right? But that was already an interesting note just from the conference press conference yesterday. You, you always felt that way because Japan, Japanese is such a like concise language where, yeah. uh, you know, one script means multiple things and whatnot. And so Shohei would give a already like long statement in Japanese and then, and then Ipe would say, yeah, you know, my arm felt good today. It felt good to get out there. <laughs> right. And it was like, where's the rest of that? Where's yeah. the rest of the statement? <laughs> right. Johnny, let me read just a bit of what he shared and then we'll share our responses. He said, I'm grateful that the media has been patient in this process. He said he's sad and shocked that someone that he trusted has done this. Obviously today that there's this thing that I'm limited to being able to say. I hope you'll understand that. I never bet on baseball or any other sports. I never asked anybody to do any of that on my behalf. I never went through a bookmaker to bet on sports. Uh, just to go over the result, in conclusion, Ipe has been stealing money from my account and told me lies. Last weekend in Korea, the media reached out inquiring about my potential involvement in sports betting. Ipe never revealed to me that there was a media inquiry. Hmm. The first time that I knew about this gambling, Ipe's gambling, was the first time that we had the team meeting, which is interesting. During the team meeting, obviously, Ipe was speaking in English. I didn't have a translator by my side. Even with that, I kind of knew what was going on, and I started to feel like something was amiss. Prior to the meeting, I was told by Ipe, let's talk one-on-one -on -one in the hotel after this, and we'll have a meeting. So I, I waited up until the, the team meeting, and I didn't know that Ipe had a gambling addiction and was in debt. Obviously, I did not and never agreed to pay off any debt or agree to make any payments to the bookmaker. When we went back to the hotel and talked one-on-one, -on -one, that's when I found out he had a massive debt. At that moment, 
It was an absurd thing that was happening. And I've contacted my representatives. When I was finally able to talk to my representatives, that's when I was able to find out Ipe had been lying the whole time. So that's when I contacted the Dodgers. The Dodgers and the lawyers at that moment found out. And then they, I told them I'd been lied to. The lawyers recommended that since this is theft and fraud, that we have to report it to the proper authorities to handle this matter. So in conclusion, I want to make it clear. I never betted on any sports or willfully sent money to any bookmaker Mm. to summarize how I'm feeling right now. I'm just beyond shocked. It's hard to verbalize how I'm feeling at this point. The season's going to start. So I'm obviously going to let my lawyers handle the matters from here on out. I'm completely assisting in all investigations taking place right now. And I'm looking forward to focusing on the season. I'm glad we had this opportunity to talk. I'm sure there will be investigating investigations moving forward. Johnny response to what Shohei shared yesterday. It's just wild to me that, you know, they reached out to Otani's uh, spokesperson who then went and got Epe to talk about the issue who yeah. then spoke to ESPN for 90 minutes, Mike. That's a long interview. That's a long right? interview. And like, <laughs> this is this is something that if you're giving that interview, you've thought about this. You've thought about yeah. what happens when I get caught. What yeah. happens if I get found out? Now, having said that, uh, <laughs> first of all, I think Otani, they, they brought in like a crisis management team like right away. And so it sounds like everybody was getting up to speed on this. Yeah. And that's why there was so much miscommunication. Because after that, it was nope. There was theft, there was stealing, and Ipe said, yeah, everything I said to ESPN was a lie. And so, I, you know, we've we've poked fun at the situation. We're not trying to poke fun at Otani, and it's mostly been at the expense of the Dodgers, just uh, laughing at. Right. Uh, for, for the first time ever, Mike, the Angels are not the butt of the joke. Welcome right. to Welcome to this perspective, everybody, where your favorite team is not the butt of the joke, and we get to make jokes about feels weird. other teams, <laughs> right? And so, you know, it, it was never, there's never anything that we would say that's like personal about Ipe or Shohei or anything like that. It, but it has been fun to watch Dodger fans write dissertations on why Shohei's innocent or why, you know, this thing, that, or the sure. other on Twitter. Sure. Um, subscribing to Twitter Blue just so they can have more than 280 characters uh, <laughs> in their dissertation. All of that to say, my gut instinct here was that Otani may have helped ipe with this debt and that's kind of how it felt since all of this happened because of the circumstances of you know how does he have money uh, or how does he have access to otani's money now a lot of people are saying you know who who knows how who has access to otani's money the second thing is is the installments and the payments that were made to this guy i honestly believed when this all started that otani wanted to help his friend ipe but didn't understand that it was illegal to do so, right? And now, if that's the case, if there is an illegality about this, Mike, this has to be the story. The The statement that was made yesterday has to be the story uh, because it absolves Otani of any illegal dealings that he probably didn't know that he was doing, right, <laughs> in terms of helping out Ipe. But to me, I think at this point, this has to be the story. and and. By all means, I, I I can believe that it's true. I don't think that it's untrue. I don't think that that's uh, the case. I don't think Otani is lying here. But my gut says that, oops, I think this was a mistake on all parties. And to me, it, it from now at this point on, because they don't want Otani involved with any illegal dealings or issues that he may not have realized he was getting into by helping Ipe, I think this statement from yesterday has to be the story at this point. Hmm. That really feels very manipulative and slimy. And Otani is none of those things. Yeah. And and if they're going to go to the authorities, if Otani had anything to do with this, then they're going to find that out. Hmm. I, I, I trust that they're going to find that out. So then he's going to look even worse than maybe he already does. Hmm. And so I'm of the opinion that he has done nothing to to say that he's guilty. He, he's done mm-hmm. everything to say that he's a man of integrity in the six years that he's been with the angels. Mm-hmm. And, and so I, I I'm of the opinion that he just was maybe really naive when it came yeah. to Ipe and yeah. when it came to who had access to his accounts and when it came to all of this gambling stuff. 
And I, I, I can fit in that category because I have high trust for the people that are around me. I'm a bit closer to some of those really specific details of resource and finance and those types of things. But Quite honestly, if this guy is pitching and hitting and sleeping 11 hours a day and really trying to keep <laughs> his body in shape, right. it would make sense why he has other people do this. So I'm of the opinion that that Shohei is innocent unless there is evidence that shows that he's not. And even if he did this on an oopsie, I could see him saying, oopsie, I, I didn't know, right? And telling his lawyer that instead of going in front of the media and then reporting this to authorities and saying, I, I didn't know anything. I had nothing to do with that. So now yeah. he looks like a liar if he's found out that he had something to do with that. So that's fair. Nothing about nothing about Otani's character tells me that he is involved in any of this. And one other thought. I just love that the media demands that he has to talk to them. <laughs> like they, they have no authority over anybody. Shohei could just report it to the authorities and move on. And I yeah. get that, that would cause a lot of controversy and all of those things. I just love that there's this demand of like, you have to talk to us. No, he doesn't he yeah. have to talk to anybody. He didn't have to talk about it at all. Right. I think he did the right thing by talking about it. Sure. And I think he did the right thing by reading a statement. And it wasn't just like a lawyer prepared statement. It really felt like him talking and sharing. And sure. I mean, he wasn't reading the whole time. He was looking up, looking around again to affirm. He seems like a, a pretty high character guy with a lot of integrity. And so I don't think he had anything to do with this unless something comes out that proves that he did. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I, I felt like my, my original conclusion before we had all the details was that this, this feels like a major oops in yeah. my opinion. And yeah. so, yeah, at this point, the statement has to be true or it's the story of what needs to be true. If that makes right. sense, based on yeah. like what you're saying, you know, if, if, if this is what they're going to do and they're going to deny, 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 well, I certainly hope it's the truth and I don't yeah. have any reason to believe it's not, but I think, I think everybody's gut instinct at the beginning of this was he's trying to help out a friend. And, yeah. and, and to be honest, like so it's a lot of the circumstances just don't add up. But I, I think what happens here, Mike is um, addiction is just so uh, detrimental and destructive, right? Especially when it comes to like a gambling addiction, yeah. because then you start to do those things like talk to ESPN for 90 minutes and tell them your fake story. You, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and so again, and like, then let I mean, me go talk to Shohei and then let me clear it up with Shohei and let right. me know that this is okay. Right. Like, and what's interesting about this whole conversation too, I saw a great tweet that said, Hey, breaking news on uh, from ESPN bets. Let's go to Jeff Passan in the, the, the fan duel super center. Like everything, <laughs> everything's connected. I mean, we have a, we have a sponsor today that's price picks and then it'll be fan duel, right? Like, so there's a lot of betting that's around, but it's so interesting that it's so taboo for, for Shohei to be involved in any of this. And, and I get, he's a player and we don't want him fixing games. You can't bet on baseball, but like, it's, it's interesting that there's all of these like, Oh, you can't, and this is terrible. And you're an awful person. And when in reality, like a lot of people are involved in this, yeah. I think addiction is something that people have to be aware of, but it, it, I find it ironic that we're, we're kind of like, Hey, this is let, let's all do this, but he can't. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. And that's the, that's the nature of the job that he's in. Right. Because there is that risk of, being caught fixing a game or what have you, or even the inkling that you yeah. might be fixing something. And so that's right. why they have these guys so far removed from it. And that's honestly why, you know, the more, the more regulated it is and not to get like political about it, but like the more regulated and um, <laughs> I guess legal it is like in California, it's not legal yet. And, yeah. and so the more regulated it is, the more control you have over the situations of, people getting into financial circumstances that they shouldn't be in. And I think that that's kind of the intention with a lot of these things. And yeah. so again, it's just a, it's a wild situation. Um, and, and the circumstances around it, things are still waiting to be found out and uh, it'll be interesting to see where it goes from here. Hey, thanks for making lockdown angels. Your first listen every single day coming up. We're going to recap that angels Dodgers game that felt oh so good. And then give you three prospects that we're going to want you to watch this season. It's all coming up in just a minute. Today's show is brought to you by Price Picks. What is Price Picks? It's the largest daily fantasy platform in North America, and they're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you play against you, just you and the numbers. Here's how it works you pick between 
two and six players and decide if that player will produce more than or less than the projected stat. And if you get it right, you get to watch the winnings roll in. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for the playoff in home court NBA basketball, there's no shortage of high-stake basketball moments this time of year. And with prize picks, you can turn that hoops knowledge into serious cash. And now you can win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. Prize picks is really simple to play. You can make a pick and then submit it in less than 60 seconds. The gameplay is easy and there's an enormous selection of players and stat types. And when you win, there are quick withdrawals. You can use Apple Pay access for a quick and easy deposit into your account. So download the Prize Pick apps today and use our promo code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match of up to $100. This is the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. Listen, I know you're watching... Fox Sports or ESPN in the morning and all you hear is shouting and you got to turn the volume down because it's just talking heads talking over each other. Well, you know what? You can make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every single day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. So Locked On Sports today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Johnny, I really liked the team that I watched last night as the Angels played the Dodgers, and I'm not talking about the Dodgers. I liked <laughs> the Angels. They looked really good. They won 6 nothing last night. And Reed Detmers, Johnny, five innings, 86 pitches, three walks, four Ks, against Betts, Otani, and Freeman, one for eight, with a walk. You got to like that. And, uh, yep. you know, there's there's three outs in an inning. And so five innings pitch, three outs each, 15 outs. But to me, Mike, I feel like Detmer's got like 18 outs because yeah. he struck out guys multiple times. And that umpire was just absolutely absurd yeah. last night, especially yeah. that pitch, that strike called strike three to Miguel Sano in on the hands, like three inches in. It was just like, who is this umpire? Get him right. out of here. And, right. and so that that's already starting, which is a lot of fun. Uh, but other than that, you're right. Detmer's five innings pitch, 86 pitches again. And the reason I bring that up is because under normal circumstances with perhaps a competent umpire behind the plate, you might've seen him come out for the sixth inning. And yeah. to be honest, using 86 pitches to get against this Dodgers lineup and get through the order the way that he did. That's that's how it is against tough teams, right? right. I mean, you, you are going to have 86 pitches, five innings, and we'd all like to see Detmers go through the seventh. We'd like that for all of our starters. But yeah, I think in situations like this, where the Dodgers had their A team out there, uh, other than Gavin Lux, I know they had a uh, Miggy Rojas over at short and Betts was playing second. Um, they, they had the A team out there, Mike. And yeah. so it was good to see Detmers go up against the A team. And then Gavin Stone projects to be there. Well, he is their number five starter for the Dodgers. And that's also great to see because he's going to be a regular part of this rotation, which means that the matchups the Angels had against him are MLB quality matchups, at yeah. least in terms of the fact that, that Gavin Stone is going to be part of the rotation this season. And it's great to see the matchups that they had. Uh, Logan Ohapi with that three run home run, just a bomb to dead center field on the first pitch. And you know, he got all of that with that fist pump, right? He, yeah. he knew that he got all of that. Mike, how about a hundred miles an hour off the bat of Anthony Rendon for a Tony two bagger? That was great to see. And what I enjoyed about that is the fact that he was uh, able to come around and score with the Hicks ground out which put Rendon on third and then Mark, uh, Mark, Mike Trout had a sharp grounder that was able to drive in Rendon. And that's on top of the fact that Ohapi hit that three run home run. Mm -hmm. But what I like about it, Mike is kind of the idea and, and maybe we'll use this all season long. We talked about it on yesterday's show, nickel and diming the opposing pitcher. Yeah. And that is a perfect example of nickel and diming because not only was it a shutout for Angels pitching against the Dodgers, and I know they brought in their subs at the end of the game, uh, but we also had Jose Suarez come in, so give us a break here. Right. Uh, got but, save. <laughs> yeah, and and so what, I, what I'm saying is, uh, even if it had been a, a, a game without that three-run home run from Logan Ohapi, the Angels were able to nickel and dime their way to that one run scored because Rendon got on second, and Hicks pushed him over, and then Trout 
drove him in with an RBI yeah. ground. Out. It's it's stuff like that where it's like, yeah, that's not that's not the result that you want, but it's a good enough result in the sense that you're you're taking runs wherever you can, and that was uh, an encouraging sign to me in last night's game. Wash made an interesting move in this lineup last night. Nolan Shawnwell or Swimwell, uh, I guess, is what the uh, PA announcer was saying. It was just Nolan Shawnwell. Like that's all he was no, saying about his he, name. He, he was said Shawnwell, Sh- but yeah, no, it was Taylor Blake Ward, locked on Angels Hall of Famer, who said Swimwell because <laughs> he did that swim move to dodge uh, Mookie yeah. Betts. You know what I think we need to do? We need to have a uh, a dad joke off, and the reason why is because I don't think Taylor Blake Ward has kids. I don't have kids, but you know, I'm a fan of my dad jokes. So yes. let's have TBW on here and we'll have a dad joke contest. And then you, <laughs> an actual dad, I'll be can, the judge can be the judge. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Well, Sean Owell did what the angels need all year long. He added two runs late in the inning and it was a great opposite way. Single scoring trout and ward who got on base with a walk and an automatic double. And he was batting sixth, Johnny. Yeah, and that was an interesting spot for him to bat. I I didn't hate it. I actually, I think I, I like actually it, liked it. Did you like it? Hit subscribe, baby. I think I subscribed to Nolan Shawnwell in the sixth spot because that's something I hadn't thought of before. Yeah, and I do like the fact that Ron Washington, even at this point of quote unquote spring training, I know we're in the exhibition back in California, but man, it's what a difference it made to this lineup. And you know what yeah. I liked about it? It gives Rendon that chance to lead off again. Like we talked about the other day, seeing a lot of pitches taking walks, hopefully getting on base via the walk or the hit. And then you have Hicks behind him. And I like the idea of Hicks being behind him as a switch hitter, mm-hmm. but Mike, you could also do that with Ren Hifo. You might even do that with Mickey Moniak in the two spot yeah. at some point, especially because he's a lefty bat and you get that lefty righty matchup and then trout third and then somebody at cleanup who's not Taylor Ward. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Taylor Ward can be there. That's fine. Yeah. But I do like the way it kind of resets this lineup because it gave Logan O'Hoppy the chance to hit that three run home run behind Nolan Shawnwell. And it kind of makes me feel better about the fact that Oh, Hoppy was was down there, if that makes sense, because I've been wanting to see him fourth or fifth or somewhere a bit higher. And the fact that Oh, Hoppy's down lower in the lineup, but has people on in front of him. That's something I really like to see there, Mike. Yeah, I he proved himself last year when he was hitting in the lower part of the lineup and was off to a great start. Then he got hurt. And so that seems to be the most comfortable place for him to be. And so mm-hmm. going to knock in runs and hit home runs and do what he can do and do what we know he can do. I'm excited to see what this lineup can do. And then to stretch that lineup, that's the biggest question. Can the lineup be stretched out? And the way that he had it laid out, Wash had it laid out last night. I, I really, I liked it. I liked what he did. That might be the move, honestly. And and the I really like Sean Noel there because it, again, we, we've been wanting him to lead off. He's been in at number two, the way Wash has had it before. But if you consider that structure of on base guy, contact guy, big hit guy. You can kind of do that down the order and you kind of reset that with Sean Owell at number six, because then you can have your contact on base guy. And then the next two behind him uh, working on driving him in as well. So as far as Sean, I know it was one game. I know it's probably the mustache power. It's probably nothing to do with uh, being at number six. No, I honestly, I think that's going to be the move for the angels in 2024. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing with America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 wins. That's $200 to use on the point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all you just visit fanduel.com slash locked on once again that's fanduel.com slash locked on to bet on all of the college hoops until they cut down the nets mike if there's one thing i've learned from watching all of these spring training games it's that i think the angels deserve a lot more credit when it comes to some of the prospects that they have in their minor leagues now as a whole the whole system might not be great but you certainly have a lot of 
good picks in this system. Am I right? Yes. And I, I read a comment yesterday that I felt was important to address. Somebody said, you know, I Google searched uh, the top 30 prospects and I didn't find any angels in there. And once again, we're at the bottom of the list and we suck and we need to do this and we didn't need to do that. MLB.com, this specific article, article that we're going to share with you, they they violently disagree mm. <laughs> with the rankings and the, where the scouts have put the angels prospects, which is why it's important for us to read what they have to say, and then look and follow the three names that we're going to be sharing with you. John, why don't you start with the most obvious name that we need to pay attention to, and that is Nelson Rada. Brandon Wood. Oh, my bad. Nelson Rada. <laughs> Dallas McPherson. McPherson. <laughs> All right. Uh, no surprise, obviously, Nelson Rada is the first one that MLB.com highlighted. They wrote, despite being four years younger than his average competition at single A wow. and never <laughs> facing a pitcher younger than him all season, Rada held his own last year with the 66ers. By the way, my fantasy team is called the E-Niners. I thought that was <laughs> clever. Uh, Rada bat 276, on base percentage of 395, and a 346 slugging percentage with two homers, 13 doubles, six triples, 48 RBIs, Mike, 55 stolen bases wow. in 115 games. He's still developing his power, MLB.com says, but has patience and speed, and enough speed to be the prototypical leadoff hitter while also providing strong defense in center field. He got his first taste of big league camp with the Angels this year and loved every minute of it. Nelson Rodas said, age is just a number. Hey, Amen. Mm -hmm. I just know I can do my job wherever they put me. I'm very motivated and I've been having great at bats and I want to continue to have great at bats. I'm getting a lot of experience and I'm really happy and fortunate to be here. I can't wait to keep playing. Ron Washington spoke of Nelson Rada and he said, he's a young kid with good bat to ball skills. We just want him to play his game. He puts the ball in play and can run. We're trying to get him a little more aggressive on the base pass, but he's 18 years old. So it's in, so he's in his own head. Wow. We, we just told him to trust his speed and got an interpreter to tell him if he gets thrown out, just dust himself off and try again. He's got carte blanche. Hmm. Rada will likely open the season with high A Tri-City, but don't be surprised if the Halos get aggressive and put him with the Trash Pandas. Wow, that's great. Uh, second name is Juan Flores. Flores has a reputation as one of the best defensive catchers in 2023 on the international market. Uh, he he threw out 53% of base stealers during his pro debut with the rookie Dominican Summer League and has impressed so much with his advanced receiving and his strong arm in the spring. Uh, he bat, uh, his bat, is, is more of a work in progress, according to scouts and MLB.com. Uh, he produced a 236 batting average, 352 uh, on base, and a 388 slugging line in the Dominican Summer League last year. Joey Probinski, uh, the Angels' farm director, said of Flores that he's a good catcher, and good catchers have the ability to control the game, and Juan has shown the ability to do that, and he has very good aptitude. So that is Juan Flores. He's 18 years old as well, Mike, and he was Young. in spring training as well. And he looked really awesome behind the dish as a catcher. So certainly someone to look forward to. Finally, Mike, Denzer Guzman, who we did get to see in spring training as well. Scouts considered him one of the best pure hitting prospects in the 2021 international free agency market. And he initially struggled to drive the ball with any authority in his first extended taste of full season ball last year. But after batting 238 with a 315 on base and a 327 slugging in his first three months at single A, he ended up going 245, 308 on base and a 426 slugging the rest wow. of the way. 426, that's pretty good for a young guy. Joey yeah. Brinsky says that Guzman will build on that momentum in 2024. He says, Denzer continued to get better over the course of the last year, and he put in work over the winter. His body is in a really good place, and his ability to get to his power should continue to improve. We think he'll be able to stay at shortstop because he has very good instincts. Mike, that's rare of a prospect who gets drafted as a shortstop. If there's anything I've learned, especially in our conversations with former Lockdown MLB prospects host Lindsey Crosby, it's that if you get drafted – as a shortstop, doesn't mean you're going to stick there. You might end up at yeah. third. You might yeah. end up at second, and that's fine. But the guys who get drafted as shortstops are and, and are able to stay there. That's always a good sign 
for a player. And then, Mike, did you hear Caden Dana is going to end up on the Trash Pandas yep. to start the season this year? Uh, any of these three excite you the most? Or maybe let's throw Caden Dana into that mix yeah. as well. Here's what I wanted to make a point on. These are three names that don't include Caden Dana. Yeah. They don't include Kyron Paris, right? Sure. Like they don't include those two guys. So when when the when the narrative is the Angels don't have anybody, MLB scouts and MLB.com are like, no, they have some guys that you really need to pay attention to. Mm-hmm. That just they're they're putting them into the ranking system based off of what they know about them. And the Angels, because they have all of their young guys in the major leagues, there's a lot of these young guys who are 18 that still need to prove themselves. And what scouts are saying is that they have a whole lot of potential and they're already starting to really perform at a high level. So this is what I, I I was excited about that. It didn't even mention the guys that we've talked about on this show over and over and over again. And so I'm excited about these three names specifically. uh, Juan Flores stands out to me because I would love to see him develop into a really great catcher so that we do have somebody that can come up through the system as Logan Ohapi gets older. Cause I could see Ohapi being uh, maybe a DH and maybe being somebody that would be more first offensively base. strong and first yeah. base. Yeah. And so having somebody that is up and coming would be great for the future to be able to replace him at catcher as he continues to get older. It is nice to have some prospects to talk about and be excited for. So what do you say guys? I think that that's a, a good thing for us Halo fans and, and something to look forward to down the road. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Now, check out Locked On Sports today. They are there for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. And you can find Locked On Sports today on YouTube and now available on the free TV uh, Fire TV channels app. Hey, give us a follow at Locked On Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Whether you're watching or listening to today's show, come on over to the YouTube episode on YouTube. Get into the comments section because we love interacting with you there. Hit that like button on your way down to the comments section. It really helps us out. Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? Well, let's grade the offseason, Johnny. Let's talk about what the Angels did or didn't do it's about time (laughs) (laughs) we'll talk about that because the regular season is coming and we're going to give our grades of the off season the angels participated in and you can give your grades as well tomorrow on locked on angels looking forward to that conversation of course we'll be recapping the dodgers versus the angels at angel stadium tonight so we're looking forward to that until then my name is john and that's my brother mike and my name is mike and that's my brother john thanks for being here with us everybody and we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Is it the big A? Is it Edison International Field? <laughs> is it Angel Stadium? What is it, John? It's Angela Stadium. Read the, <laughs> read the-